Welcome to Catholic News World. Welcome to Catholic News World. Please subscribe to our channel. My name is Steph. Here are this week's breaking news headlines. Prayers have been answered as a Catholic priest and five others were released after they had been kidnapped. Agenzia Fides reports that Father Peter Abong Okang and his companions were released on the morning of Saturday, November 26. They are fine, said Father Peter Abwe, Vicar General of the Diocese of Ogoha, confirming the release of Peter Abong Okang, parish priest of St. Stephen Roman Catholic Mission Church in Ogoha Diocese in Cross River State, Nigeria. The priest was kidnapped on November 24 in an area in the state of Nasarawa, along with five members of the St. Jude Society. The priest and three women and two men, were on their way to Abuja to participate in some church initiatives when they were attacked and taken into the bush. The kidnapping of priests and religious has been a crime that has been going on for some time in Nigeria. This year, the number of kidnapped priests seems to be increasing. Bishop Robert Barron Chairman of the U.S. Bishops, addresses Senate vote on the Respect for Marriage Act. On Tuesday, the U.S. Senate passed the Respect for Marriage Act. The bill, which first passed the U.S. House of Representatives in July, will codify the nationwide redefinition of marriage to include same-sex couples in federal statute for the first time. The bill will also heighten the threats to religious liberty that have persisted after the Supreme Court's Obergefell decision of 2015. Bishop Robert Barron of Winona Rochester, chairman of the USCCB Committee on Laity, Marriage, Family Life, and Youth, issued the following statement in response. We are gravely disappointed that the misnamed Respect for Marriage Act passed the Senate and continue to call for its rejection. Pope Francis wrote in 2016 that we can hardly stop advocating marriage simply to avoid countering contemporary sensibilities. We would be depriving the world of values that we can and must offer. Indeed marriage, which is a lifelong and exclusive union, a complete and mutual gift of the husband and wife to each other for their good and for the procreation and education of children, is essential to the common good. However, decades of social and legal developments have torn sexuality, childbearing, and marriage from each other in the public consciousness. Much of society has lost sight of the purpose of marriage and now equates it with adults' companionship. This bill fails to include clear, comprehensive, and affirmative conscience protections for religious organizations and individuals who uphold the sanctity of traditional marriage that are needed. We affirm our respect for the dignity of all engaged in this debate, and acknowledge differing perspectives in our civil society, but the impact of this bill will only contribute to the diminishment of the sacredness and integrity of marriage in our society. Archbishop Corge Leone, the prior chairman of the Committee on Laity, Marriage, Family Life, and Youth, had also written to Congress in opposition the act, in a joint letter to the House of Representatives and a separate letter to the Senate. Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Archbishop of New York and Chairman of the USCCB's Committee for Religious Liberty, wrote about the religious freedom harms of the bill in a recent article. Last week, Cardinal Dolan and Bishop Barron implored Congress to reverse course, offering a detailed analysis of how the bill tips the scales against religious freedom. Father Otis Young of Covington, Louisiana, and his assistant Ruth Pratts went missing. Later the badly burned bodies of two people were discovered in Covington, and police arrested a man on charges of double homicide investigation. On November 28, detectives arrested 49-year-old Antonio Donde Tyson for charges. It was later confirmed by the coroner that both of the victims were indeed Father Otis Young and Ruth Pratts. The parish and archdiocese of New Orleans released statements and held a prayer vigil. The St. Peter Parish community is devastated to find out that the victims in Monday's double homicide in downtown Covington are confirmed to be that of Father Otis Young, and Ruth Pratts. We are deeply saddened, and ask that you join us in praying for Father Otis and Ruth, as well as for their families. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Archbishop Amond of New Orleans wrote, The horror of the events that have unfolded here in Covington is beyond shocking. The pain, sadness, 
and disbelief that something like this could happen will stay with us but particularly those who are most directly affected for a very long time. Today as we await confirmation of the second victim, I offer my prayers for both victims of this heinous crime. In a particular way we prayerfully remember Father Otis, a beloved pastor who touched the lives of so many with his faith, warmth, and pastoral heart. This is a loss for our church and for the entire community. I extend my prayerful support and that of the clergy, religious, and laity of the Archdiocese to the Covington community and in particular for the parishioners of Peter Parish. I also want to extend my gratitude and prayers to the law enforcement personnel, the coroner, and all authorities who have worked so carefully and thoroughly through these very difficult circumstances. For all those who are hurting and asking how this could happen, may I humbly offer that we turn to our Lord Jesus in this time of mourning. A Catholic Cardinal who was recently appointed by Pope Francis has died suddenly. Cardinal Richard Bauerberg's death was announced in a statement signed by the Secretary General of the Missionaries of Africa, White Fathers. With sadness and pain we hereby inform you of the return to the Heavenly Father of Cardinal Richard Bauerberg which occurred today, Sunday, the 27th of November 2022. Our confrere was taken by ambulance from the General Aid to the Jumeli Hospital. And we received the sad news. May Richard rest in the peace of his Lord whom he so generously served. On behalf of the bereaved society. Our prayer and our thoughts go also to his family, to his diocese, his fellow bishops, to all his friends and acquaintances. It was signed by Father André Léon Simonard, Secretary General of the General Curie of the Missionaries of Africa, White Fathers. Richard Kuwaya Bawober, Bishop of Wa, Ghana, was created a cardinal on the 27th August in absentia by Pope Francis. He had arrived in Rome the day before, but was unable to attend the consistory due to illness. He was hospitalized and spent more than two months in hospital. Only a few days after leaving his hospital room, Cardinal Bauber passed away on Sunday, while still in Rome. Boston Celtics coach, Joe Mazzola, was asked about the royal family's visit to their game. Did you get a chance to meet with the royal family? And if not, how was it like having them there in the building? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> the Prince and Princess of Wales. Oh, no, I did not. I'm only familiar with one royal family. I don't know too much about that one. Thank you. But I'm glad they're hopefully they're Celtic fans. Yeah. Thank you. Watch your program every Friday at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Catholic News World Channel. God bless. Please subscribe to Catholic News World's YouTube channel. Thanks and God bless.